Session 1. What is the Gospel About? With L. J. Bachu. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In all these things we are more than conquerors. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Jesus said that when we are in trouble we should be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. He said to come to him and he will give us rest. Paul said that we are more than conquerors and Peter wrote that God has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Many Christians struggle. They try to do God's will, but still fail. Instead of good relationships in our families, we have to deal with divorce and separation. People are leaving the church. But according to Peter, we should not have those issues. We have what we need for life and godliness. Why is our Christian living not working? What do we do wrong? Whose fault is it? Who can fix it? If we have all things that pertain to life and godliness, why are we still searching? We seek life and godliness through religion. We invent works and activities. We work hard to become better Christians. Our huffing and puffing to impress God, our scrambling for brownie points, our thrashing about trying to fix ourselves while hiding our pettiness and wallowing in guilt or nauseating to God and are a flat-out denial of the gospel of grace. Whatever works or methods we come up with, other Christians have tried already, but without success. We made it about us and about the church. We don't know what the genuine gospel is about. What is the solution? We need to learn what the gospel is about. But first, let's see what the gospel is. Is it the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John? Because it says the gospel according to Matthew or Mark's gospel. Paul writes according to my gospel, so it's according to Paul's gospel. It says in the New Testament the gospel or the gospel of Jesus. But what is the gospel? The word gospel comes from the old English word good spell. In the New Testament, in the Greek manuscripts, we find the word euangelion. Both these words, good spell and euangelion, mean simply good news. Why don't we just say good news? Why do we use old words from other languages, like in English, from the Old English, Gospel, or in other languages, Evangelium or Evangelia, taken from the Greek language? This is what religious people do. We have run into false theology, we have run into churchianity and human interpretations, and a hundred other follies, but friends, it is a perfectly lovely and refreshing thing to get back to Jesus. The Gospel is not religion is not based on how good you do. It has nothing to do with your participation in church services. It is not based on your good works. It doesn't involve other humans in your personal relationship with God. How is the word gospel used in the Bible? In the New Testament we find the word gospel in different forms. It says the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom of God the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel of God, the gospel of His Son, the gospel of peace, the gospel of the glory of Christ, the gospel of your salvation, the gospel for the uncircumcised, the everlasting gospel, and Paul says, my gospel. So if gospel means good news, why don't we use it and say, the good news about the kingdom, the good news about Jesus Christ, the good news about grace, or God's message, or the good news about His Son, the good news about peace, the good news about your salvation, the message for the uncircumcised, the everlasting good news, or Paul's message. What is the gospel? The gospel is good news for you if you don't know God and Jesus, if you rejected God, if you didn't believe in His existence, if you reject the church, and if you are in the church but you still struggle. The gospel is good news that is based on God and Jesus, what they did for us and what they still do in us right now. The gospel is available for everyone, it doesn't matter who you are. 
It's available right away. You can receive salvation right now. It works instantly. It is not about something you are going to achieve in the future. So in order to understand what the gospel is, you need to understand what the gospel is about. And to understand what the gospel is about, you need to know what the gospel is. So these two things are dependent on each other. The gospel is good news, and the good news is about Jesus. Jesus is the gospel himself. So let's see what is the gospel about. In order to know what the gospel is about, we need to know what is God's plan. The question is, what was God's original plan in the beginning as he created Adam and Eve? Now in the next session, I'm going to talk about God's original plan. But the question is, after Adam and Eve sinned, did God come up with a second plan? Because God did change the way he interacted with people. Then he gave the law to his people. Then Jesus came to fix the problem. So, if we say that God had a second plan, then we imply that God did not know what would happen, that God would not know that Adam and Eve would not obey him and they are going to be separated from him. But this is not possible. God knows everything. God knew everything. So, the idea of a second plan, it's not reasonable. The question is, what is God's plan for us today? You can read more about God's original plan in chapter 3 of my first book, The Great Counselor. On my website, in Christ.academy, you can order an ebook or a hard copy of The Great Counselor, or you can download an audiobook for free, or just read it online for free, in Christ.academy. So, in the next session, I'm going to talk about God's original plan, and I'm going to talk about what is God's plan for us today, and we are going to learn that it's still the same. God has still the same plan as he had in the beginning, and he wants us to live in total dependency on him, in a very close relationship with him, as Adam and Eve had before they sinned. The gospel is about salvation, and God reveals his plan for us through his gospel. So it's about salvation, about restoring our relationship with God. It's about life in Christ about living led by the Holy Spirit. Now, Christians cannot make the difference between salvation and life in Christ. They don't know what are the works done for justification and what are the works that God prepared beforehand for us to walk in them. The gospel is about making disciples for living in total dependency on God. The gospel is about discipleship, which should be available for every believer no exceptions. There are no two classes of believers. Everyone should have discipleship. It's about salvation and life in Christ, and we need to compare it, the gospel with religion to see what the difference is and to learn how to eliminate sin from our lives. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. We are going to learn how to get rid of feelings of condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. We are going to learn how to live a life that pleases God. He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. How to be productive in doing God's work. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. But first, we need to learn how life in Christ works. Now, gospel means good news. The good news is that you can be saved. Through Jesus, you have direct access to God. Your access to God is not through the church. Your priest cannot give or deny your access to God. 
You just need to believe. It is simple. You choose to believe in Jesus. It is between you and God. Salvation you have by God's grace through faith. Faith is a commandment. You have to believe that Jesus died for you. You choose Jesus as Lord in your life. The only way to God is Jesus. No institution and no human being can stand or interfere between you and God. You have direct access to God, no matter who you are or your past. If you are an atheist or you rejected the church because they hurt you, regardless of how many sins you have committed, especially if you are a Christian and go to church already, God accepts you because He loves you, not based on your achievements or your church attendance. It is your decision. Jesus paid the full price so that you may live a relationship with God as he intended in the beginning, so you may have peace and security for your spiritual life and have Jesus to rely on for the material things and have a meaningful and fulfilled life. All these things you have by God's grace. I would like to lead you to God now. Now, the decision to receive Jesus is not an emotional decision, but an objective one. Salvation is by God's grace through faith. Faith is a commandment given by Jesus. You need an objective and clear mind. People who accepted Jesus in an emotional state of mind or simply decided to become Christians, many of them left the church already and they reject God because the decision has to be very conscious and objective. You need to decide, you need to be aware of your decision to receive Jesus, to have salvation, to be reunited with God. If you decide to accept Jesus, you simply say these words with me. Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner and I need you. Please forgive my sins and my ignorance towards you. Please save me and restore my relationship with you. Please accept me to become your son, your daughter. Dear God, I am asking you these things in Jesus' name. Thank you for your grace and for your love for me. If you did accept Jesus and you need discipleship, I can help you and lead you through the next steps. Whether you are a Christian or you just received Jesus, send me an email. My email addresses are lj at inchrist.academy or ljbachu. This is l jbaciu at yahoo.com or simply text me through WhatsApp plus 353-85-190-7763.